Biden budget promotes war in Ukraine, Middle East, China, and U.S.-Mexico border. Let's read some of this article. I might read all of it. I have it all uh, here. The White House released a draft budget outline Monday afternoon that has two entirely separate audiences. One of the audiences is the working class people who gets false promises and the other financial oligarchy who get money, money, money. For the mass of the American population, the Biden administration makes demagogic promises of social spending to be financed by tax increases on the wealthy, pledges that will be discarded as soon as the election campaign is over. And let's pause there. So he says that the audience, you know, they got to put something in for the public and along with the real shit. The real shit is the war funding. This is the shit they want to do. But they can't just say, here's war funding for our budget. They got to throw in some sweeteners. So they throw in some sweeteners. And the sweeteners, you get the sweeteners if we're able to fund, if we're able to fund those sweeteners by taxing the rich, which you know is never going to happen, right? So the, the everything that is promised to us is dependent on Tax increases on the wealthy. The war prop, the, the war machine just gets regular tax dollars. Let's continue. Uh, for the financial it's stock, or let's wait, let me go back and finish up this. I'm gonna reread this part and continue. For the mass of American population, the Biden administration makes demagogic promises of social of social spending. To be financed by tax increases on the wealthy, pledges that will be discarded as soon as the election campaign is over. For the financial aristocracy and the military intelligence apparatus, Biden proposes record spending on the military and on domestic and border police repression, together with trillions in invest in it. Trillions in interest payments, nearly five trillion over the next 10 years, going straight into the coffers of Wall Street and the billionaires. Oh man, this is truly a despicable government. Continuing, naturally, the corporate controlled media devolved it virtually devolves virtually all its coverage to the pie-in-the-sky promises of social benefits that have no purpose except to try and fool the population in an election year. While saying very little about ongoing military buildup and nothing at all about rising interest payments, which will soon be one of the largest components of the federal budget, the social spending component can only be detailed briefly. Biden proposes to restore the child tax credit and enact a new tax law for first-time home buyers, establish universal pre-K, 12 weeks of paid family leave, substantial forgiveness of college student loan debt, and uh, subsidies for an array of other social services. All this is to be paid by raising corporate income tax to 28%, restoring only half the cut from 35% to 21% enacted under Trump in 2027, and increasing various other taxes on the wealthy. This is, to put it politely, a political fairy tale. Biden made no serious attempts to push through such policies in 2021 and 2022 when the Democrats controlled the House and Senate, allowing a handful of right-wing Democrats in the Senate to block most of it. You see, they're, they're referring to the rotating villains known as, I think it's Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. Remember that? How it was their fault? In case, in any case, the Democratic Party would not enact these measures if it had total control. 
because the vast bulk of spending is earmarked for war in Ukraine, the uh, Middle East, and further down the road against China in the Indo-Pacific. The promises of social spending are brazen lies that will be discarded on November 6th, if not sooner. The heart of the budget is what it will provide for the Pentagon, a record $850 billion in discretionary budget authority for fiscal year 2025, which begins in October 2024. This represents a 4.1 increase of budget for uh, year 2024, which has still not yet been approved by Congress. Total U.S. military spending will once again top the $1 trillion mark, far more than the 10 largest military budgets of other countries combined. That's where all our money's going for. That's why we can't have health care. That's why we can't have a, an array of, of things is because of this. But um, so don't be fooled by this budget. All the sweeteners, all the window dressing that's gonna fall. They're gonna take they're gonna take all those window dressings right out November 7th, right after the election. Anyway, oh no, that was just for show. <laughs> that was just for show. That was a floor model. That's not for sale. That's essentially what's going to happen, which they always do. Look what happened with $15 minimum wage. What what brought that down? Senate parliamentarian. Voting rights never happened. Now, that's not something I wanted, but the people who support the Democratic Party uh, wanted that. 